Welcome to Media Men Online. I'm Jeremy, and this is Dan. What's up? The final episode of Dexter New Blood aired on Sunday night. So this episode, season 9, episode 10, or I guess we're just going to call it Dexter New Blood season 1, episode 10. It's called Sins of the Father. This was the, enti- the entire reason they brought back Dexter New Blood, allegedly, was that the ending of season 8 uh, was not satisfactory. Which I had always disagreed with. It was a bunch of people who... I I always wonder if people read the same article or not. You know, everyone seems to have stopped watching at the same point. But they can't remember anything about anything else except the one thing that they stopped watching it for. The entire episode is Dexter in custody. We haven't talked about Dexter at all leading up to this. I'm a big Dexter fan. I've been watching it religiously, one might say. When season four was out, I watched seasons one, two, three leading up. Season five, one, two, three, four, and so on. And every year since the series has ended in 2013, every September, which is when the um, episodes would air, I'd rewatch the entire series, series one through seasons one through eight. I did that uh, leading into this one. And the season up until this point was pretty good. It was, there was something missing. A, A buddy of mine at work, uh, she she likes the show as well. I think it might have been a little of the comedy aspect that Masuka brought. Masuka, Dokes, and a couple other people. But it was just missing something. And I don't know what it was. But it was still good. It was more Dexter, which if I'm still watching it every year, I'm, I'm obviously uh, into. So that brings us to today, the final episode of Dexter New Blood. The entire episode is Dexter in custody. But Chief Bishop arrests him. That's his girlfriend at the start of the episode. She arrests him because she finds one of Matt Caldwell. That's the guy Dexter kills in. This is all. I mean, I guess I should have said it in the first place, but this is the basis of our show. Spoilers, right? So she arrests him and Dexter gives her a pretty solid reason as to why the screw might be there. There was a guy he was feuding with throughout the series that he ends up killing. Dexter uh, floated the idea that it might be, you know, Kurt Caldwell, Matt Caldwell's father, trying to frame him. Uh, But the entire time, uh, she's very emotional. She completely dismisses Dexter's uh, very plausible theory. It's a lie. Well, we don't even know if it's a lie, actually. He very well could have put the screw there. Now, the screw is the titanium rod that they used when uh, Matt had an injury. And Jeremy is a science man, you know. Titanium doesn't melt. So when Dexter burned the body, that was all left behind. Dexter is in custody. He kills the deputy and goes on the run. He meets up with Harrison, his son, to leave town. And Harrison shoots him, kills him. Son kills father. It's supposed to be, I guess, a good ending. So the reason that Harrison killed uh, Dexter is because Dexter killed an innocent man. Hence, Dexter who has killed 144 people to this point. I think 138 or so were innocent, did not, you know, they all fit the code. They were all murderers. So all the all the lives he saved mean nothing now. It's a pathetic way to end the series. And this is the ending aside. So if you were going to kill Dexter off, you got to have him have the upper hand through most of the, the episode, right? You can't just have him be sitting in the corner being scolded by a woman that we just met. He does not have the upper hand for one second in this episode. I guess you could say when he killed the uh, the deputy, but he was still on the run. It's it was just it was just really strange. I thought it was uh, laughably bad, but any of my future rewatches will not include this. Uh, that's the good thing about it is they had a proper ending at, at the end of season eight. So when I rewatch it next September, I'll just I'll just watch one through eight, you know, and pretend this doesn't exist, which is <laughs> kind of what I do with most media today. I, I don't know how you would have added a character arc to Dexter and still had like those number of kills unless he was like in like a really big city. And I don't I don't know. I don't know. Well, what happens is every time he kills someone, he learns a life lesson or or a lesson on how to fake a life lesson. So when he, he kills uh, Valerie and uh, Luis Castillo, he asked them what, how did they uh, make their marriage work for 16 years? Or 
And they tell him he brings that information and just uses it as his own to to Rita to get her to uh, what was it? They were kind of in a tiff at the time. This was still season one, so it's not like it was uh, the engagement or anything. So he just he did that with every single kill he had. It was he would take the information and and apply it to his life, fake or not, because he had a, a hard time with emotions. So. But now he's dead, and they're talking about a Dexter New Blood season two for some ungodly reason. So, what the only thing that makes sense there is that how Harris, Harry was Dexter's dark passenger and kind of like the voice, the devil on his shoulder or the angel, however you want to take it. He'll be that for Harrison, which is really, really lame. So, you know, we really want this dipshit kid to to lead because. Yeah, he can he'll have access to police files and everything, so he'll definitely be able to consistently kill bad guys. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> well, go out and watch Dexter season one through eight. Trust me. Stick with it. If you if you've ever tried it before and the first couple episodes are a little bit too weird for you, push through. Because the same thing happened to me. The first time through I, I got about one maybe two or three episodes in I'm like, man, this is just too weird. And I, I put it to the side, but I had a buddy who was just like, no, he, cause he let me borrow his DVD. He's like, no push, pushing me into it. I'm like, okay, okay. I'll, I'll finish the goddamn series or season. And yeah, it was all history from there. So if you're ever thinking about it, just, just push through. I promise you the, the first four seasons are some of the best TV that you'll watch, especially if you can deal with a little bit of, of, of gruesome, gruesome action. They, they don't show a lot of the dismemberment. It's just a lot, a lot of blood. So if you're hooked by the end of season four, even though there's a, a, a decline in the, the storytelling and the, the quality itself, I mean, the, the cinematography and everything's still very good, but the storytelling and the writing itself takes a decline. You're hooked by then. So, so you'll finish it out. Trust me. <laughs>